Hey, you know me, I'm Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com. And, uh, you know, just got a little bit of uh, a really cool thing going on here. And, yeah, you know, if you ever wonder um, what kind of paper do I cut, and I've said it before, Denver Magazine is a type of a uh, little magazine. It's a tourist magazine that you can get. Uh, I don't care if you're in Denver, Miami, L.A., Seattle, Portland. Uh, you go to the airport, you go to your bigger hotels, you're going to find a rack there, and it's got the things to do, the maps, the attractions, things like that. So go and find your magazine for your city. It's the same kind of paper, um, more than likely, uh, that we have here in the Denver Magazine. And, um, you know, so let's uh, just show you. I've, I've worked, this is one of the knives that I've used before. Um, I sharpen a little here, a little there all the time. But, uh, you know, it, it, it is sharp. It does cut quite well, actually. So, just some fun. Uh, you know, here's, here's something really cool. I'm gonna wad this up so it doesn't try to blow, you know, away. We do have some wind today. Um, got an email uh, back about, uh, I don't know, the first part of August. I wasn't in on it, wasn't privy to it. Um, then I came across it later, Chance, the uh, videographer, the, our cameraman, um, actually said, hey, we got a, a really cool thing here. Roland, all right, from Budapest, Hungary, all right, which is really cool, uh, sent an email and says, uh, order some of your sharpeners, and uh, the kids love them, and uh, they got a, <laughs> he sent us a picture of about a two-year-old sitting at his uh, high chair with the sharpener and a butter knife, okay? And he said the kids love them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people say they're gonna send me a knife, they want me to sharpen their knife, uh, you know, stuff like that, and I never get it. So, you know, we kind of laughed a little bit, like, oh, Budapest hungry, okay. Um, we'll never see this. Well, 10 days later, boop, guess what happened? Roland actually put his knife, uh, I think there's a, a knife in there, yeah. Um, and maybe the sharpener uh, in there also and sent it to us. So here it is. So Roland, uh, Budapest Hungary. Um, this is for you in particular. And who knows, maybe we start up a little relationship uh, and maybe I come to Budapest Hungary and uh, sharpen your knives for you. I, I can do that, you know. And um, so let's, uh, let's open it up. And let's look and see exactly what's going on here, what kind of a knife it is. Um, I'm just going to poke that through when you get to that hard part of the plastic. There it goes. Like that. Put this down here. Roland, buddy, this is for you. So we have, we have a knife. Okay. And, uh, okay, he sent the sharpener back because he wants to see that knife. It's a cold steel knife, sharpened with his sharpener. Okay, that's cool. Uh, do we have a little note here? Um, okay, dear Chance and Brad, thanks for taking the time to make a video about this. I've sent you one of my, <laughs> okay, P-U-K-K-O style, that must be poker chip style, um, Scandi grind knives. Uh, which I've enclosed some sharpener sharpening difficulties. Okay, use the poker chip to sharpen it. Any suggestions on how to sharpen it? Greetings from Hungary, Roland. Okay, now I got to make a small disclaimer. Uh, Scandi grind is all the way from the the very impact of the sharp of the blade all the way straight up. Same thing on this side. It will change the Scandi grind a little bit. But if you don't use the knife real hard, and all you have to do is tune it up, I'm gonna show you uh, actually how to sharpen a Scandi. And that is a Scandi, but you know, not all Scandi blades are 100% Scandi. This actually has just a microscopic, little, tiny secondary bevel on it. Okay, but it, it's like 99%, 98% Scandi grind. It's really cool. I'm going to hold still like this. Okay, and it's a fin, F-I-N-N, Wolf, W-O-L-F. Um, I see it has a uh, ambidextrous uh, place here to put the, 
uh, pocket clip on this side. I'm going to hold still this way so you can really see that it's uh, cold steel, you know, and everything. Looks like a really nice knife. Um, I would like that knife. That's pretty cool. Um, it's got a pretty good handle. It's got a little rough texture to it. It's probably a, a hard plastic, uh, you know, composite uh, man-made material there. That's okay. You know, it's got your finger guard here. Um, it also has a, a bit of a place for your little finger on the back so that it actually stays in your hand. And um, let's cut a little bit of paper with it, all right, and see what it looks like right now. If I was really going to sharpen this um, uh, for a long period of time, what I would probably do, see we have a, okay, I'm just going to use this as a pointer. Your, your uh, Scandi grind starts right here. And then it goes about 5 sixteenths of an inch down to the cutting edge. So you want to stay flat on that surface right there down to the cutting edge for your Scandi grind. All right. So the sharpener, I'm going to hold it this way so you can see I'll hold still. So that would be actually matching just like that. If I was going to use this sharpener all the time to sharpen that knife, I would actually file that plastic nub off right there so I have a better chance of keeping the knife completely flat. Now that is completely flat across there. It's parallel. It's matching the Scandi grind without it touching. But, it, I, I mean, I could get away with it easy because I know exactly where on the sharpener that, that uh, Scandi grind belongs. But you may want to grind the little nub of plastic off of the back so that you can make sure you really get it flat across that knife. So what I would do is I would just set it on there like this, and I'm looking right now uh, trying to determine if I'm really, really close to the cutting edge or if I have to tip it ever so slightly to match that little tiny grind on, on the uh, blade. So let's first see what we got here for sharp. And uh, Roland, first of all, thank you for buying the product. I really appreciate that. I think you bought the long handle and the poker chip or the little round one. Um, so thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. Budapest Hungary. Um, I thank you for watching our videos, uh, you know, purchasing our product, giving it a try, believing, because you have to believe or you're not going to spend your money, believing that we actually tell the truth, have a good product that really actually works. Then we build a long-term relationship when you see that it really does work over a long period of time on many, many different styles of blade, different types of blade, different hardness, different steel, different knife manufacturers, uh, different tools, uh, wood tools, uh, wood chisels, um, metal chisels. Uh, my carbide is harder than a metal uh, chisel, okay? Um, I just got done doing State Fair in Wyoming. I have so many kids from, honest to God, five years old up that buy the sharpeners. These are farm kids, these are ranch kids. Uh, we're going to do a pictorial and some videos on the Wyoming State Fair and the kids and what the kids are doing with, you know, the bulls, the steers, the lambs, the pigs. They're, they're raising them up. They're being judged on how they've raised them and things like that. Um, but I get a lot of repeat customers, lots of repeat customers, okay? And then the kids go off, they get their dad, their brother, their older brother. You get three or four 15-year-old kids that come up. One gets his knife sharpened. They all buy. That's fantastic. All right, enough about that. Let's, uh, let's just see. Okay, that's, that's not too bad, but it has a sound to it that, that's not quite right as far as I'm concerned. As far as just going out skinning an animal, gutting some fish, cutting some fruit, vegetables, cutting some meat, uh, whittling on a stick, making a walking stick, things like that, I think it would probably be just fine. But as far as really, really sharp, and it is, even though it's a Scandi grind all the way out to the cutting edge, the blade's just a little thick. So actually the blade being a little bit thick, it has to push the paper apart as it cuts through. So that adds a little degree of difficulty uh, to the cutting. Um, you can have a hatchet where it'll shave hair, but it doesn't want to sh uh, slice paper quite as good because it actually gets pretty thick pretty fast, okay? So I do have to push on it just a, a little bit. It's not quite as sharp as I would like to see it. So let's, and it, it, it bites, but it doesn't bite like it ought to, okay? So I'm gonna use, my leg here for uh, for a little bit of a bench to work on. 
I'm going to match the Scandi grind and I'll turn sideways so you see those two lines are parallel. So which line am I talking about? I'm talking about the line of the straight edge right here, okay? And the line that you would draw between the heel and the toe of the blade if you went right straight across, we want those two parallel. Just, just like that, right there. I'm going to turn it a little bit and then I'm going to begin to slide the sharpener along. And if I see, uh, Roland, you're going to actually see maybe some little tiny scuff marks back here on the heel. If you were doing this on a whetstone, you would positively see little scuff marks on that line right there as you come around with your whetstone. Now because on a whetstone, the sharpening, uh, the part that you're sharpening is on the bottom, you can't really see, so you would have to tip it back and forth until you feel the flat and then stop where it's parallel and then begin to move your knife and hope that you kept it parallel all right, Scandi grain, grind blades are not real easy. I'm just going to be honest with you. If you're really going to do a Scandi uh, grind knife, you probably ought to have a Lansky that you can actually clamp on there, get it set perfect, and then work it that way. Okay, but out in the woods for us all the time, basically, this is a really good deal. So I'm just going to go along like this. I'm kind of letting my fingernail be on this part of the knife kind of like a guide I pick it up a little bit move towards the hilt slide it out pick it up a little bit move back here slide it out pick it up a little bit move back I move along pretty rapidly and now I actually tip it I, I work it just a little tiny bit to make sure that I'm really flat uh, as I go down through here I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that it's flat and what I'm going to have to do to actually <clears throat> sharpen this knife is tip it slightly towards the cutting edge okay and this little plastic right here is actually beginning to put little scuff marks on the blade but it is just plastic it's not scratched you can actually get that off of there all right so we're just going to go along like this I'm not picking it up very far and then I set it down and slide it for oh man I can see the shine uh, and I'm going to stop here in just a little bit and show you that what I say is happening is actually happening and if we can get a good enough shot with the camera you positively will see okay now here's what I'm gonna, going to explain to you I'm gonna hold still we get the camera in there the way it ought to be okay right here I'm gonna show you where I actually scuffed up the, the knife blade a little bit back here and a little bit down here so what we're actually seeing is we're seeing a little divot a little indentation between here and there and I know that that's the tiniest 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 little hollow ground right there because it's not scuffing up here it's only scuffing up here and here and you can see that it goes all the way along and all the way along so I am actually uh, taking this extremely straight line oop, got a bug um, on there and setting it down parallel like that I'm sliding it along and uh, that little nub of plastic is putting little tiny scuff marks on the blade. All right, so let's get back to business here. Start back here. Move. I'm going to slow down a little bit so it looks like this. And I'm really starting to see it shine lengthways with the blade here. Right from about there. Okay, I'm seeing a lot right there. And uh, that's good. You have to. That's, that's an indication that it's actually sharpening. So we take the carbide. I'm putting more pressure on it than normal. It's pretty hard steel. I actually have to kind of reshape the blade a little bit, restructure the blade a little bit. So I'm pressing, I'm guessing in the neighborhood of five or six, seven ounces because I actually want to cut the blade. I don't want to be here all day. Uh, if you're trying to do this with a whetstone, it better be a very uh, fine, or excuse me, uh, coarse grit and you got to move right along with it so just like this and Roland when you get this knife back I want you to really really look at what I've done to it look at the heel of the knife back here look at the toe a little divot between that indicates that that's the most minute perhaps now see out here okay I'm gonna point this way from about here out you're gonna see that it's actually beginning to shine very well all the way across so this is not 
the most minute hollow grind. This is actually flat across there, but the wider distance here turns out to be a little hollow grind, okay? And I'm actually gonna see if I can't take most of that hollow grind off. I'm putting a little more pressure on my index finger to, to put a little pressure on the cutting edge so I can achieve, I can actually, if I do this right, <laughs> I can actually achieve a more uniform or closer to exact scandy grind than they did at the factory. It might sound a little bit funny, but uh, you know, just uh, trust me, it, it is happening. And when Roland gets us back, he'll look at it and see. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over and go at it this way. I'm putting a little more pressure on it down here like this. And um, I, I'm not actually picking it up. I just lighten up on the pressure when I come back, I lighten up on the pressure. When I go forwards, I, I press on it a little bit. I look at the shine. I want to make sure that the, the real shine uh, from the new steel being exposed from me cutting the blade is down on the cutting edge. And we're just going to go along like this. It's kind of like milling it like a, like a machine. All right, because I've done things like this a lot, it's not that hard for me to do. My fingers are actually on my leg, so I'm acting uh, kind of like, like a machine. I'm just letting it slide on my pants there. And that way I can keep it parallel. That's parallel. That would be on the cutting edge. That would be on the heel. So we're not going to do that. We're going to look at the shine. And um, hang on just a second here. we got a little bit of a problem there with some glasses. <laughs> All right. So just like this, go right on around. Yes, it is live. We don't... Uh, don't phony things up. Yeah, the camera guy and I, we talk to each other just a little bit, and once in a while I forget and got to get reminded, so that's okay too. Uh, it is live. It isn't scripted. <laughs> we don't shoot these two or three times and show you the best that we think that you should see. Okay, because I'm getting out here towards the tip, I'm not trying to just come back because I'm going to fall off that tip and, and then jam into it like that. So I'm actually going to get it parallel, act like a machine run along like this, tip it as minutely as I possibly can towards the cutting edge, just like that. Now Roland, when you get this back, you're going to examine the knife, you're going to listen to what I say, you're going to see that what I said is absolutely true, and if there's any way you can, Roland, use a cell phone, use some camera, whatever, uh, if you have to, make a video and send us the uh, SD card. And we'll put it on, not doctored up, not phonied up, not lied about. But Roland, if you could, please, um, when you get this back, have somebody hold the camera, whatever. I want you to look at the knife and I want you to give your honest opinion of what you think I did to the knife, how sharp it is. Did I change it a little bit? Did it turn out the way I said it was going to? Um, are the little, the little plastic point, did it drag on the back? Did it leave little tiny plastic scuff marks? Um, you know, uh, did I tell the truth when I made this video? I just want you to talk to the people and give them an honest opinion of what you think of what I did. So let's, uh, let's get this finished up just like this. Now I'm going to turn it over, pester the backside just a little bit. I get lighter. Now see, I'm, I'm actually not hanging on to the sharpener. My fingers are actually on the, the keychain part of it like this, but I use my index finger like this to keep it from wanting to come back. So I actually, I'm gonna hold still, it's like that, like that, index finger and everything. So I don't actually have a hold of the sharpener at all at this point. So at this point, that it's easier to, to find and feel the flat. If I had a hold of it, you know, like this, you're all bound up, you can't do anything right, you know. So we're gonna be gentle holding it like that and move right along. Now, I moved out onto the black part, and right now, I am gonna tip it <coughs> ever so slightly up, just touch it as light as I can. Right now, I'm just polishing the blade. So what do you mean by polishing, Brad? Well, I'm gonna polish that little tiny wire edge off the blade, that little burr, that little micro ragged edge that develops on a knife. So some people say, I don't sharpen, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, if you have a piece of steel and you have a file and you start filing on it, 
little tiny whisker edge, little microscopic edge, is actually going to be dragged off of the blade, off of the steel, out. And that little tiny whiskery fine foil-like edge is going to get pulled out there. And when you do the other side and you file, 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 the same thing is going to happen. You can actually stretch that little tiny thin whisker edge that develops on the knife out there, I'm going to guess five thousandths of an inch. So to get that little ragged edge off of there, otherwise when you cut something, it'll actually fold that little edge over so in essence it actually turns into a round microscopic edge. Now that edge will come off of there and then you still have the sharpness of the blade. But a lot of people say, well the knife's never going to cut right if you don't take that microscopic burr off of there. That has a lot of truth to it, but it doesn't mean that blade is ruined or won't ever cut. It's just something that you kind of have to deal with. Okay, so with that said, I'm just going to touch this really, really light all the way out and drop it off the tip. I do this 20, 30 times. Let's say, you know, I used to say 20 times, 10 times. Uh, I'm convinced now after a long, long time of doing this, it takes about 15 touches on each side really, really light. Okay, to get that wire edge off of there, we'll put the little sharpener right there rolling. Um, okay, that definitely has a better bite to it. I'm not saying that that's finished, I'm just going to check it and see because if I literally have to mill to do it right, I have to mill the whole side of that Scandi blade down a little bit or at least from about half out down to get a cutting edge on it that's right if I'm going to try to keep it a Scandi grind edge. All right, so let's see here what we got now. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm always tickled. Um, when, when I, I've done this so many times, but you have to understand, I'm milling hard steel down by hand without a whetstone, a diamond, uh, no steels, Lanskys, no uh, diamond impregnated stones. I'm just using a hard, sharp tungsten carbide corner. I'm using my skill. I'm keeping it at the right angle. Every pass, I won't say 100% every pass, uh, because it might be a little bit off one way or another. But overall, when I get finished, I accomplished what I set out to do. So, let's uh, cut the paper just a little bit more. Um, the wind is blowing, that does make a difference. I use really flimsy paper, because if it's not crazy sharp, like that, okay, It'll bend the paper, it'll push the paper out of the way, it'll tear the paper or something, but it won't just slice the paper. I'm gonna see if I can work on this just a little bit more. That's actually pretty sharp. Okay, I'm gonna work on it just a little bit more. Um, I don't wanna make too long a video out of this, but because I know what I know and I do what I do and I've done it so many times, sometimes I run through it too fast. People come back, they look at my videos and they say, would you please slow down? I can't really see what you're doing. Please explain just a little bit better what you're doing. Take time to show uh, with the camera, you know, what you're doing, how you're holding it and stuff like that. And um, so now I'm going to do this and you should not see any light. Now, okay, I'm going to explain here. All right, I get the camera set, both hands on the camera or something. So, all right, if you can't see any light under there, it's parallel. If I lift it up in the back, See how the light comes through? That's not parallel, I'm on the cutting edge. If I lift it up in the front, you're gonna see light in the front. Now I'm on the back, the heel of the knife, so I'm not even actually sharpening or doing anything. You may wanna go back there if you're trying to work it down and you're trying to reshape and reconfigure the blade. I can take that sharp edge and I can just start working on any part of that knife that I want to, okay? And I was given permission to reconfigure, reprofile, restructure, whatever I wanted to do to it. Uh, Roland said, you know, basically speaking, do what I want to to the knife. I laughed and said, you know what? <clears throat> I ought to just send you back the handle and say, well, I reprofiled it so much that I guess I don't have a blade anymore. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that to you, Roland. Um, so let's go ahead and get to work on it. Now, let's, I, if you can see the shine of the blade, <clears throat> 
and I wish I had some kind of a, a microscope that you're okay some kind of a of a microscope uh, camera with uh, lights and everything here's an explanation if you can see this right now you can see more shine from here the tip of this knife down to the cutting edge you'll see some scuff marks along the top you're gonna see from here to there there is no scuff marks that's a little tiny hollow grind then as we get down here there's a point right there to here it's absolutely perfect from the cutting edge to the heel that is also shiny so we know that that point to this point is absolutely flat across there then we start losing it a little bit from here on around you'll see a difference in color you're going to see a brighter shinier color here you're going to see a duller color there and you're going to see a shinier color here then when i get to here it's shiny there's a little bit of a dark just a, a tiny bit of dark right there then it's shiny and then a tiny bit of dark right there and shiny the rest of the way out so i'm going to say approximately 40 45 percent of the length of that blade is actually a true scandy grind with no hollow grind in it okay so let's uh, stick that knife again i'm going to brush ever so lightly again only this time I'm going to lighten up on the pressure. I'm going to do about an inch and a quarter increments, come right on out, turn it over and do the same thing. And by the way, this side is exactly the same as this side. Okay, I can see the, the shine and the scuff mark. So it would be just like this if I'm going to match it, come right on around. But right now, I just, and I took my finger off of it because I want it to just, to just sit there. I don't want to influence the sharpener to cut at all. I just want to polish the blade, take that little microscopic burr off as much as possible. If I had my friend John Coger, he's a veterinarian up in Wheatland, Wyoming. Uh, I used to travel with him, work with him, and I would use his uh, 1600 power microscope to look at blades so I could tell. I looked at his scalpels, I looked at his hunting knives, I looked at the knives that he claimed is as sharp as you're going to get them. Uh, things like that so that I knew under the microscope what the blade ought to look like and then I went with my sharpeners okay to sharpen all kinds of things so I knew what the blade looked like I didn't have to guess okay so uh, and also real quick the harder the steel the more it cuts the steel off the softer the steel the more it it actually hangs on to it and drags it out then you got to deal with that microscopic edge so really good hard steel cuts better turns into a finer edge okay and uh, let's see that's that's plenty sharp and right out to the tip back here right out to the tip of the blade Oop. okay little tiny hangy on there but if we can get it to cut I gotta get that off there if you can go out there and play with with the blade and get it to catch and go out there and cut and like I say again this knife even though it's a scandy grind it especially out here at the tip it gets thick fast and the reason it gets thick fast because you're gonna see this distance from here to the cutting edge is smaller than it is back here is real wide so this is actually thicker if it was the same bevel angle degree here the, this part would be clear back about here but it's not and that's an indication that it actually gets thicker at the cutting edge so Roland thank you very much uh, I do appreciate and I like the fact that you actually bought our product and um, I love the idea that you actually sent it to me to work on it and here's another check that people do all the time if it'll take your thumbnail off that easy I'm gonna just be honest <clears throat> I am NOT a fan of Scandi grind it's too hard to make them sharp you have to work too hard to keep it absolutely parallel I would prefer a hollow grind thin the blade down do a small secondary bevel anybody can do a secondary bevel you know when you get it tipped right and I like I'm on a whetstone a lot of most people out there still use a whetstone we've only sold I don't know 20,000 or 25 30,000 sharpeners over the years uh, oh god it's got to be more than that I sold 12,000 of them the first year or less 
yeah, all, it's probably 40 or 50,000 sharpeners. Um, I'm not a fan of Scandi grind. That's okay. You got to work harder to make it sharp. I prefer a hollow grind, thin the blade, secondary bevel, easy to sharpen. Okay. Roland, this is for you, buddy. Definitely a thumbs up. I appreciate what you've done for us. Uh, I tried to be very thorough um, and really show what I'm talking about, what I'm doing, show what I did. When you get this back, please make a video of some kind. Uh, if you don't have any way to put it on YouTube yourself and stuff, make a video with a little camera, send us the SD card. We will not cut or edit it. We're just gonna put it on as it came from you. If it has flaws, we don't care. Um, if you had to stop, start, you know, you knock the camera on the floor, the kid's crying, we don't care. That's fine. Um, we love uh, real, okay? We love real. Um, so just send us something real. I'd appreciate it. This is Brad Buckner from Denver, Colorado. Fall day, beautiful, gorgeous day. And uh, you take care out there. I hope you enjoy the videos.